You end up at Ferrari, and we had that very emotional victory for you in Montreal. I think it was your birthday on the, yeah. on the day. And if I'm not uh, mistaken, you actually put your helmet into the crowd, your winning helmet, which would have been fantastic to have today. But tell us about the emotion of winning in a Ferrari. Okay. Um, we, we, I mean, I made a part of my career with you. So you remember the, the situation, the Grand Prix. Um, it, the car was not, uh, reality was not really... Um, the, the, the string, I mean, the, the, the best of a Ferrari. So, yeah, the, the reliability was shit. Exactly. So, we, we had a lot of um, um, retirement, and um, uh, finally, in, in, um, in uh, sorry, uh, in Montreal, when I won the race, you know, I finished 17 times second. Uh, I don't know how many times third. So, I really enjoyed this race as a world cha uh, championship. I really took it as a world championship. And the emotion just... Emotion was massive because when, you know, when it, um, it was... Uh, because Montreal is a bit like uh, Monza. No, not like Monza, France today. <laughs> like Monza. They, they, uh, it's a Ferrari tra a track. Because Gilles Villeneuve, first victory... For them, you know, uh, at the time they have the link of the car number 27 and the Ferrari. So there is a lot of fun, uh, Ferrari fan in Montreal. When I took the lead, I took it um, because Michael came uh, to the box. He had a problem with the uh, shifting, but I didn't know it. You know how it is. All the corners are blind, so you don't really... Um, Michael was five or six seconds ahead, so I didn't see him. But... Suddenly, I see the, the crown uh, jumping and the flags. So I understood, you know, but I was not sure. But when I passed to, uh, for, for the pit lane, I see P1, I, I cry. But I had uh, eight or, or ten laps to, to do again, you know. And, you know, with the tears in the uh, eyes, it's not comfortable to drive. <laughs> so I had to, uh, you know, get back on the concentration and uh, good time. Do you remember who finished second and third on that day? Yes. <laughs> uh, Rubens. Yes. And um, Eddie? Yeah, correct. It was two Jordans on the podium. Yeah. So you're crying because it's your first Grand Prix victory. He's crying because he's thinking about the no, I'm, prize money. I'm thinking about the credit of the glory because you may not think this, but I also was crying for him because I felt that I and the Jordan family and the Alessi family, we had put so much of real pain uh, and adversity uh, in Love. those early years. So I was overjoyed. Was I ungrateful that we didn't win it? No, we were never going to win that race. You won it, and we were second and third. And I'm looking up at the podium, and I said, this must be the first time ever any team has had one, two, three, because I always felt that you were... You had Jordan in your, in your blood and Jordan in your heart. So that's the way I felt about it. I had tears in my eyes as well because I was racing for Williams. I you qualified were... third. On the first lap, you remember it was slightly wet. Under the, <laughs> under the bridge, I spun into the gravel. Now, what was really bad about that, my uh, late grandfather and grandmother, they never tra traveled, but they, they never flew but they wa always wanted to go to Montreal because they had a cousin that lived in Montreal. So I brought my grandparents to Montreal, <laughs> to the Grand Prix. I had them in the uh, grandstand opposite the start-finish. The race starts. I, I never came round again. They, came they, <laughs> they never saw me do one lap of racing at a Grand Prix, but they had a wonderful time and met with their cousin there. But and you do know he would have won that race. I would have won that you race. You would have won that race, but don't you agree? I would have won, no. He, he won every race. If he he won every race. Anyway, look, can we move on? Because I just go back a little bit. Um, another thing that made me really, really proud, not alone was there, you brought very proud moments to me, was the race uh, in Paul Ricard, where you finished fourth. But I went to Phoenix because I felt I was part of that deal to put the deal together with Tyrrell. And you were on the front row of the grid in the Tyrrell, and you led the great Ayrton Senna for, what, half the distance or quarter yeah, of the distance? Yeah, that was fantastic. If anyone listening to the podcast has never seen this footage, it's on YouTube. It's you can see Jean and uh, Ayrton. Ayrton going so wheel to wheel. I was P5 on the, on the grid. I was not in... On, uh, You're not in the front row? No! 
I was P5. And then I had a good start. And you know, slowly I was passing the car, and then I said, oh, oh my God, I'm going to lead the race. And then I, I, uh, I lead the, the, the race. And then in my mind, immediately I said, I hope my friends in Avignon are watching the TV, you know, <laughs> because uh, I was so proud about this start. Then one lap, two laps, three laps, and, and then I pull away. But uh, slowly I, I saw red point coming back, and it was Ayrton. But you made a point there where you saw three drivers. I know another instance, slightly different. But my two drivers and Jean shared the podium on another occasion. Spa. Where you saved me and got me that race by... You, make, by you make it happen. Yes. You make it happen because you tried to kill Michael Schumacher. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome both. So you no. were on the podium there as well? He yes, he served. served. Ah. But you know, I have to say something because maybe people never understood the situation. When Michael hit you, okay, this place, the river, because you can't see the rivers on TV, yeah. but the river, it's a worse place in Spa, it's in this place, and when he slowed down, he slowed down on the line to make him uh, pass, and honestly, uh, Michael made a big mistake. So it was not in purpose, obviously, because if you do something like he did, you're a killer. Yeah, and really, uh, I I feel sorry for you because uh, the, the way you know everything. I didn't. No, people. When I came here yeah, yeah. after, people had the banner saying "Killer Cold Fard," and uh, yeah. of course, I never did it deliberately. It was just. Uh, and the, I think you were w one lap down actually yeah, when it happened. Lapped. So, you, absolutely, I was being lapped. Yeah. So you 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 make it and and uh, let's say properly, but the river and the spray didn't make you in a good position. But I know that, you know. In F1, many times, uh, you look really um, uh, not the driver you are, and uh, you look really stupid, like it happened to me when I finished my fuel in, um, in uh, Australia. Ah, uh, you ran out of fuel on the I car. ran out of the fuel. Yeah. But and people said to me, but are you stupid? And then, no, I'm not stupid. I know in a car without fuel, you cannot <laughs> go, you know. But the problem is uh, my pit, uh, sorry, I jumped from one. No, it's because, perfect. This but is my pit wall uh, was at, at the braking. And because we start with uh, the fuel and then we had to stop, so uh, at half distance, uh, my car was faster, and I have to shift seven gears just before the braking and then shifting again, you know? So I was really concentrated on the lead, and I, I never saw the pit board. Why the did radio, they call you? No, they called me like, uh, you have no idea, but the radio was not, the jack was not in. Ah, I, I had no radio, zero. And suddenly, because uh, Mika came in, I understood, you know. I look a bit like that because I lost. I, I, I understand something was going on, and uh, I look stupid. But circumstances. But I'm not. Yeah, without the radio, 